is the Talking Buds Podcast. Sixty episodes, Ryan. Sixty. Yeah, cheers to that. Cheers to 60, baby. I don't think either one of us started this podcast with the intention of abandoning it at any point because you're never going to go anywhere if you give up. But still, 60 episodes is pretty impressive, if I don't say so myself. I can give us a pat on the back. Yeah, plus the the postseason pints. That's the postseason pine, so it's really been 67 episodes. Yeah, that's... that's... Ironically enough, Ryan, I'd like to wish you a happy one-year anniversary. A year ago today, we were watching the Maple Leafs get eliminated in Game 7 by the Boston Bruins. Yeah, I that was great. That was, that was awesome when you're just up 3-2 in a series against a team that you just need to beat really badly, and you're just due to beat, and then you just blow it. You just blow it again. So... Happy anniversary to that. It was... Last year's Game 7 was really disappointing. Yeah, it was awful. It and was it's just not like sucked. it's not like the other two Game 7s against Boston weren't. They absolutely were. But... But this one sucked. It did suck. Because, like, yeah. you went into that... Do you remember Game 6 was, like, a day game? No, I can't. I, I don't know. I yeah, can't really Game 6 that, was, like, a 3 o'clock start. It that was blew great. It. Yeah, and yeah, I, I, just, I just remember them being up 3-2, and I was so pumped. I was like, finally, they got some momentum. They could – did I think they were going to end in six? No, but at least, like, you have two cracks at it where you just like, hey, we can't get it done this time, and game seven, and then just gone. No good. Eliminated. Bye. It's time to ask you how you're holding up during this pandemic. Where the end is nowhere in sight. I like to do a weekly check-in to see how life is going for you and how you're handling the situation. So, what's new, if anything at all? I'm I'm just working. Like when you're when I'm at work and I'm like obviously we're taking precautions and I have a job where it's like I'm not really in close quarters with anybody anyways. Like you can be separated and and don't be close to anyone. But when you're out just driving around and you got things to do. It, it feels like nothing is going on. It feels like nothing's different other than seeing stores closed, but on the roads and just like just out there, like it seems like nothing's going on. It's weird. And then you're at home for a couple of days and you, you have CP 24 on a hundred times a day. And then you're like, okay, that's the shit's going on. Yeah. The, one thing I've learned about myself and my work is I, I'm not a big work from home guy. Like I've got your your standard office job and everybody's working from home and it's like I don't I don't really like like there's some people who love working from home and are just like stoked on it. Other than the fact that you get some extra sleep in the morning, I'm not a huge fan. Why? What what is it the distraction? When I'm at work, I'm in work mode. I'm there to do my job and it's way easier to feel engaged when you're in the office with all your coworkers and you're just immersed in what you're doing. And it's just, I find it way easier. And I'm also the type of guy who, when I deal with people at my job, I like to have a face to face conversation, not a huge email guy. No, like that's annoying. Take your four paragraph email, I'm not reading that. Like if you send me an email that's more than a paragraph long, I'm going to cease reading it. I'm either going to walk over to where you sit or I'm going to book time with you and I'm going to say, we need to discuss that because I am not sitting and reading that novel for the next 20 minutes. (laughs) It's like any text message I get to, not even email, if there's something like a long paragraph. Oh, some people love yeah, it though, man. Yeah. Some people just like, ju- just love sending these massive emails. And it's just like, 
What? I would just get, I would get stressed if, if I had to work from home. I, I feel like I'd get stressed about like how productive I'm being or if That's I should be too, doing right? something better than, than I am, or I'm, I'm not doing something. I don't know. I'd just be freaking out all the time thinking that I'm, I'm like doing something wrong. I don't know. I get what you're saying. Well, this is a bit different because everybody's in this boat. So everybody's like day to day has been impacted. So you're everyone's kind of figuring it out together. Yeah. So that's a little like at that part of it's a little better, but yeah, man, I just, I'm not, I like having my routine and I like having separation between my home life and my work life. And this like blurred line of just get up and sit at the kitchen table and just on my laptop, sending emails and answering emails and, conference calls and stuff all day it's just like it's not i'm not a huge fan of it no i wouldn't be that i wouldn't be that pumped about it either anyway moving on before we get into this week's topic du jour let's do a bit of housekeeping shall we ryan some news and notes earlier this week jason spezza told toronto sports media that he would like to remain a leaf next season and that he feels that he still has some gas left in the tank. I'm paraphrasing, but that's essentially what he said. We posted this on our Instagram, Ryan. People the, loved it. Oh, overwhelming positivity. Yeah, Spezza is over. Yeah, Spezza is over with the Talking Buds listeners, dude. Yeah, whoa. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Big time. Yeah, so, what, what's, what's your take on it? Well, he... Uh, I I'd, I'd like to have him back. I think he's like I think he's a good veteran. I think um Keefe's found the right role for him. Uh the beginning of the season with Babcock was a disaster which I don't think any of us blame Jason Spezza for whatsoever. And I think I'd like to have him back. If he's willing to sign one year deals at at 700 grand, you can come back as much as you want, bud. Yeah, so, 100%. I think he's found the right, I think they found the right role for him somewhere between that th- 3C and 4C depending on the situation. Keith had him on the wing a lot too. So I'm I'm in favor for it. Like and it's not like I said, you want to sign for the league minimum? You're a beauty in my eyes. Yeah, I, I just this this just wasn't news to me. Like didn't we already know this? Like I I, I don't understand how this is like a new developing story. I felt like all season I I knew he wanted to come back and he loved playing here. He said it a bunch of times and it even was reported that he he was down to come back. So I saw this and I'm like, that's kind of random that it's just popping up out of nowhere. But I don't know. He's got some name value. You're right. 700 grand is 700 grand. I, I, I'm not getting like, I just don't know how much gas he has left in the tank. So I'm not going to get too excited when it comes to him contributing on the power play or moving up in the lineup, which he can do. But it's just, man, this this fan base, they, they could pick a fourth liner and just make him a king. Whoa. Oh, buddy, yeah. I'm they looking at the comments fired right up, now. Man. Oh, yeah. Com- Every wow. single one of them is like, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Bring him back. Great leader. Love him. It, it also helps that he's a local guy, too. Yeah, bring him back. Like, cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, like, cool. Bring him back. Why not? I would, you would, yeah. everyone else yeah, would. With you. Yeah, is it something I, I'm gonna get fired yeah, up sure. about? No, no. But bring him back. Next bit of uh, news I have for you, Ryan. Gary Bettman joined in conversation with Ron McLean. Did you watch any of this or see any of the highlights? Yeah, I saw the highlights. He's pretty determined to finish this season. Yeah, because they're losing money hand over fist. So much so that he's like, even if it, he said, even if it impacts next season, that that shocked me. Like I I thought that the NBA and the NHL, like if I was a betting man and had to put a put down a wager, my thought was they they would just call it a day on the season and then start putting plans in place on how you're going to start next season with no fans, et cetera, because you've got tons of time to plan that out. But he seemed, and and you know what? It could be one thing Gary Bettman is not, is an idiot. And everything he says is 
calculated and he knows exactly what he's saying and why he's saying it. So he could just be posturing and he doesn't want to be the first one to say, yeah, we don't know if we're going to finish the season. And that's not a good message to send to uh, um, your players and the rest of the teams in the league. But yeah, I was, I was really, really surprised by that. And like, so he says that they've put together several different models of how to resume the season, but wants to do what's best and fair for all involved. So Ryan, there could be like a 31 team play in. He didn't say this, but my mind started spinning. Could we see a 31 team play in? We're going to see whatever we have to see for them to make the most amount of money they possibly can. That's, that's what, that's, I don't know what that is. Like I have, I don't, I want to sound smart and like that I can understand the, the business side of everything, but just listening to Berkey on the radio today, who is a guy who I have an opinion on him in other ways, but when it comes to being a businessman and being smart and knowing what's going on, I trust his opinion. He's just, what he was talking about was just the amount of money that it's just getting that they are losing. It's just crazy. And he's talking about the salary cap, like going down by like a significant amount. Like, man, I, sometimes you forget how, how big of an impact this has on this league, which has so many franchises who have empty buildings. And yeah. Oh yeah, man. And it's like, it, Gary's going to do whatever Gary has to do to get this game back on the air. There will be no fans there, but if there's got to be a 31 team play in, if that's what works, he's going to do it. They're going to do whatever, man. Elliot Freeman reported that the league is looking at four centralized locations to finish out the season. But Bettman obviously said that's far from confirmed. Yeah. Um, He also, Gary also kiboshed my soundstage idea. I said last week, I said someone who knows way more about this is going to crush this idea. But he said that um, the NHL facilities are the most equipped to handle like the sanitation needs and also the most equipped to house a bunch of different teams so you think about it like you got to think that like scotia bank arena would probably be one of the locations they're talking about dude you could have like four games a day going on there yeah it, and but like it goes so much further than that it's like hey where where are they all staying so they gotta get a bunch of hotels it's not just the players coming there's a million trainers a million coaches and is there any family coming along or is it just the players? And I don't think there'd be any family. Like how how can they, how can they test? Like, I know they're all in a controlled environment, but like, you just, you never know. Like, is there going to be any testing process? Like, it's just to me until that gets figured out, all this is, is worthless talk. Well, you know what else that he said that blew my mind and it makes perfect sense. It's something I hadn't even thought about and blew my mind. Okay. None of these guys are on the ice. So he said that in his discussions with the Players Association, the Players Association has said they'd like a three-week mini camp because as soon as they start playing again, the games are really going to matter. Like, are they even, like, close? Like, I, I, I still feel like they're... It's like they have all this... They're, they're, they're ready. They've put all the scenarios together. They're trying to get ready for when it's a go. But it just seems like that go is still far away. So yeah. all this stuff oh, yeah. is just like, it's just almost fantasy talk. Like, like, Dude, it is total fantasy talk. And that's why I said, like, he knows exactly what he's saying. And I don't think he wants to send a message that we're considering canceling the season. And I don't think they want to cancel the season due to the financial ramifications that you talked about earlier. But it's just like, there, I, there's so many hurdles that I don't understand how you overcome them. It's like... It's almost better to just call it a day on the end of the season. Come back in September. Take the whole summer to figure out how you're going to do this. Because even if you come back in September, October, there's not going to be any fans. So that gives you tons of time to figure it out. I do think that the centralized location is something that will end up happening for all of them. Like there's been talk about baseball resuming in all their grapefruit league stadiums yeah that's not bad scenery actually when you when you look at it no it's not and it makes sense scenery because they all have a facility so why not and they're all in florida which apparently just doesn't care about the coronavirus so it just sucks that 
for some of these guys. Like, I know they're getting paid millions and this is their job, but like, imagine just being like, yeah, you got to come live somewhere for three months and never leave. Like that would well, that's, suck, dude, that's, that's, man. That's, like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, that would suck. I just don't even like playing in a specific now. city that they don't like. Imagine being stuck in a room for two months. Well, and I'd I'd argue like so. And again, I anyone who's listening to this, this is by Ryan and I are by no means experts on the business of hockey. No, okay, no. But it's like, but it's like, but it's like, if you're doing it in a centralized location, you have no fans in the building. So you're not making any money off a live gate concessions, like all that kind of stuff. So uh, pretty much all the money you're making is from TV revenue, advertising dollars and rights fees from Rogers and NBC in the U S. So there's still a huge chunk of, the league's income that's not coming in with the no live gate. I know that doesn't matter in places like Phoenix and Florida, but like, yeah. But then there's the whole like revenue sharing bit. Like, bit. Yeah. it's just it's so complicated. I just. Yeah. But anyways, it's, it's yeah. I, I was I was really surprised to hear how determined he is to resume this season. Um, listen, if they do come back, and they want to do like a 31 team play in, I think that will be. The spectacular. best thing ever. Yeah, I think see, that will see, be spectacular. That I was going to say that. I was going to say that if I'm a TV person and the NHL is coming back and that's the way they're going to make their money, I don't want to see game one of the regular season at September. Even if, it's in, even if it's in September, you find a way to get that cup over somebody's head. Cause, well, and- cause that's going to be, I don't want to, I don't want to come back with game one of the regular season. Do what you have to do to, to have some sort of playoff because man, people will care so much more. It'll be and it's almost selfishly. It'd be awesome for you and I and everyone else just to be right into playoff hockey. Like I don't want to watch game one. Like, Oh, you and I, you and I have talked a lot, right? You and I've talked a lot about like the lack of interest in watching hockey games that don't involve our team or like someone else's team. But this would essentially fix that. Like, if you got a bunch of mini play-in series, I'd watch all those games. Same. It'd be awesome. Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, it'd be awesome. And you, you just have this massive, like, playoff it would, be, it would be the greatest thing that the NHL's ever had, in my opinion. Not yeah. even close. It, yeah. it would be the greatest dude, thing. It would be like a March Madness league. bracket. Yeah. Oh, dude, it'd be in any league. Forget yeah. just the NHL. If this happened in the NBA or, or any sort of league, it's like, this would be phenomenal like yep. absolutely yep. phenomenal yeah yeah be like a march madness bracket yes yeah yeah that'd be unreal well we can only uh we can only keep our fingers crossed ryan and hope that something like that happens because as we're talking about it now i am getting really excited at that that idea that sounds like an unreal idea yeah be epic epic all right let's move into this week's conversation topic an idea that we gave ourselves last week just talking generally about the maple leafs people seem to like when we did our austin matthews profile this one is going to be a little bit different than that but it is a profile nonetheless and today ryan we are going to talk about maple leaf captain john Tavares. let's go let's do it i want to take you back to the summer of 2018 John Tavares, where's he going to go? He's holding meetings with teams in, I was it Los Angeles? I'm pretty sure it was LA. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was LA too. Yeah. yeah. He's, the Leafs are there pitching. Babs, Shanny, and Kyle go in. The Sharks are in. The Islanders are trying to keep him. And the whole time, it's like, where's he going to go, Ryan? Where's he going to go? Then, Ryan, July 1st. Canada Day, NHL free agency. It's announced that Johnny T has signed a seven year, $77 million contract with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Average annual value of $11 million. This has been called 
the greatest free agent signing in Maple Leaf history. You and I have talked a lot about how most of the stars that this team has had have come here via free agency. And you especially have talked a lot about this team's horrific drafting history. For horrific history in general. Like yes. Just, dude, so this would, would, yeah. would, would ahead. you agree that this is the greatest free agent signing in Maple Leaf history? Uh, in my life, 100%. And if you, yeah, it is. It is. In terms of name value and and a guy who can, you can sign and basically become your captain right away and who has a unreal reputation around the league of just being a good player and a good pro and good guy. Like, dude, I was we were stoked. This was yeah, awesome, we man. Yeah, we were stoked. I, I don't look back at it and be like, oh, well, no, it was awesome. It was, it was awesome. It was the first time where it was like the Leafs are getting the big fish. And yeah, they got to pay a lot for him, uh, whatever. But that guy was going to get supposedly more in San Jose if he signed for there. Ninety-one sure the, million dollar contract. The Sharks yeah, and I'm offered. sure I'm sure the Islanders are were in the same boat. So it's not like like they were in that market. They were competing, and they had to do what they had to do to sign him. And we were fired up, man. Like it was awesome. It, and it, it was it still was is more, awesome. It was more than. I'm just getting the big fish, Ryan. It was the prodigal son returning. Like how many times Oh, here we with go. Any Ontario oh, guy who comes into God. the league, is it just the narrative is just he wants to come home and play in Toronto. And a few years prior, the Leafs were courting Steve Stamkos, and apparently they had they were gonna make him the face of like Canadian tire, something like that in Canada and he was just going to be like they they were going to give him the keys basically. And he turned them down and went back to Tampa. And for years it's always been this kid grew up in Toronto. He wants to come back and play in Toronto and it never happened. It never materialized. And then finally the kid who grew up playing in the G in the G baby. Yeah, came back home to be a Maple Leaf. And that that is what I think makes this so special. And that is what I think qu- makes it the greatest free agent signing in Maple Leaf history. I think just based on talent alone, it's the greatest signing in history. This Man, you look back at this team's history, as I said a million times, it's in terms of individual success. There's been a couple of good ones, but man, it, it's been, it's not, a, it's not a, it's not pretty. It's not at the top of the league in terms of history of individual success. And it's just to go out and get a guy who's already a first overall pick. It's not like he left his team because there was anything like he had an injury or his bad blood or anything. The guy literally just wa- needed to get out of the island and he wanted to go home. And you're right. I, I And that's a narrative that I just got so tired of because you heard it so many times, but it was almost put to rest because of him. And he showed up in a big way, Ryan. First season records 82 points, 47 goals, 41 assists. Career year. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal year. Yeah, career and, year. And he, was, you, he was great from bell to bell last season. Yeah, he was. And he got to, in that whole chemistry with Marner, too. That worked yep, perfectly. That was a part of the sales pitch. That apparently was a massive part of the sales pitch that Dubas gave him was, you're going to play with Mitch Marner. Yeah, and he, he, he played a full 82. Yep. As well. Yep. Yeah. One thing I'll say about John is his time so far with the Leafs, he's been pretty healthy. Yep. He had and a couple. It, he had a couple of minor injuries this year. Yeah. But but he's yeah. still man. He's still up there in games. And if you look at his like statistics, like last year, uh, career year in goals and points, and and you just look at him. Like I find it. It's gonna be a challenging episode because. When we're watching the games currently this season, I still remember just being like, ah, John's a step behind, step behind. But then you analyze his career and what he did last year. And it's like, dude, this guy's, this guy's legit. Like this guy's, he's not, he's not, um, Crosby. He's not Ovi, but man, he's a damn good hockey player. Like this guy is about a point of game player and he's about as solid as a dude as you'll ever see. So this is going to be a tough episode for me, man. I, I, Johnny makes me feel all type of ways. Uh, this is why I thought it was a good uh, topic of conversation last yeah. week when we stumbled yeah. upon it. Well, also, if we're going to talk about last year, Ryan, we got to talk about the infamous game in Long Island where he just got d- 
just oh, that booed. was garbage. Yeah, like just garbage. accosted by Islander fans from like just merciless, absolutely merciless. His teammates abandoned him. Oh, it was a joke. Yeah. That that might have been the most actually, you know, we 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 did the Bruins watch back. We talked about the the David Ayer situation. I think we're forgetting this one as maybe the most embarrassing game in this era of Toronto Maple Leaf. Like it's that classic, was it's garbage, classic, though. man. Yeah, it's classic though. Like just you're you're in a hostile environment and instead of rising to the occasion, you fold you like a cheap wilt. suit. Yeah. Yeah, you wilt. That's that's that is what this team has done more often than not. 100%. Oh yeah, my since in the last few years. Like name me, I could count on one hand the amount of games that this team has risen to the occasion and played well in over the last two seasons. What are those games? You know? <laughs> I can't the, think of them. The, there's a Florida game this year. The last game they played against Tampa before they shut the season down. There was a game the Islanders on Hockey Night in Canada with Hutch in the net that they got a shutout. So they're they're yeah, right. Okay, there's may, been a couple. Maybe they, 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 one hand was harsh. Okay, can count on two hands. But, yeah, but I know you were, you're right though. It, it, it's exact in terms of like tough games, like not just like go in and have a good performance. Like yeah. you need a W here. You're playing kind of a rival. Like can you get it done? And I felt so going back to the game where they lost in the island. I felt so bad for a man like that was that sucks. And I know the yeah, fans. Oh yeah. I get it. Like they they were pissed. Their 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 best player left them. Even though, man, they're a pretty damn good hockey team now. But but man, that's a tough John. I don't want to see a guy like John to go through that. And that sucked, man. That kind of pulled me out of like critique Leaf fan mode into like just legit fan mode and just i just hated those fans i hated that team i still hate them yeah so do i i i despise them every islander game is circled on the uh on the calendar yeah, from now on 100 percent, john yeah 100 percent. and and you but, look at his time in the island like dude that that team sucked yeah that I know. team sucked man like yeah, they were garbage and he had nobody to play with so yeah. and he stayed and he re-signed and stayed yeah yeah, he, he he did it. He he gave them their shot, and he's yeah. like, I'm I'm leaving. I'm going home. I know his his like wife had something to do with that, or maybe it was family or other influences that kind of helped him along the way. But man, I don't regret. I don't think that guy should have any regret for leaving that place. Garbage. But the following Saturday on Hockey Night in Canada, they came home. This is such a warm memory. The ovation that he got from Leaf fans, just stoked to have him. And that that's a feel good moment. Like we, that's on our Instagram too. Like it, go check it out. It's on YouTube everywhere. It's, it's, it'll make you feel good. I highly recommend watching it. When we did um, the season review episode a few weeks ago, we talked about how this past off season, there was all the speculation about who was going to be the next captain and everyone had their own opinion. And then uh, that before the first game, the Johnny was revealed to be the new captain. And uh, could you go wrong with that choice? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Just was already an automatic choice. I felt like everyone wanted to see 34 get it, but then he took his pants off and mooned a security guard, and that was the end of that. Yep. So it was. it's all John. How could yep. you not? It is all John, 100%. Yeah. And, and, and and that, isn't it funny how I always called John? I feel like I feel like Kyle Dubas got me into that. Like, cause usually you would just call him Tavares, but every time Dubas does like a presser, he always calls him John. And Dubas also, you know, Dubas loves like if Chris Johnson asks him a question, he's always like, well, you, you know, know, Chris, Chris. Yeah. when we, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good question, Chris. Oh, he yeah, does that oh, every yeah. time. It's yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah. Like, Terry Koshan asks him a question. He goes, you know, Terry, that's something we thought about a lot. Yeah, and it's like I know somebody taught you to do that along the way, but it's like it, it's almost into like hero mode now. <laughs> like now know, you're just I being know. a hero, I man. Know, like just chill. Like it, we get it. Like you, take you, the you cape, pay attention. Take the cape off, Kyle. Take yeah, the cape. You know cape who you're off, talking to. You're impressive. Like just, just you, you don't have to do it every time. Every yeah, single know. time. I know. Hilarious, <laughs> man. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, where were we? Oh yeah, uh, Tavares gets the C, and 
okay, this is where this conversation is going to take a bit of a turn. And this is why, like, when we did the Matthews one a couple weeks ago, it's like I went through and highlighted key um, moments in Matthews, like, short career with the Leafs. I didn't want to do that with this one because, to me, it's like there's two sides to this John Tavares conversation. There's bringing him in. Everybody's stoked. He has a career season. He's the greatest free agent signing ever. He's the captain at the beginning of the season. But I think a lot of people, Ryan, yourself included, struggled watching him a bit this year. Before the season was canceled, 26 goals, 34 assists. So not 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 horrible, but not not great. Um you often talked about his pace of play this year and how slow he looked from time to time. And there is a group of people in the fan base who now with the benefit of hindsight and an $11 million cap hit after what's happened with the Matthews, Marner, and Nylander negotiations who question if this was the right decision. Talk to me about what it is that you struggled with with Johnny this year. I, I've had some time to reflect on it. And like during the season, I, I feel like what's happening in this league now is John gets 11 million and you look at his, like last year, he got 47 goals, 41 assists. That's a damn good year, man. It's hard to score 47 goals in this league. That's worth a lot of money. But you look at, Dreisaitl, you look at McDavid, you look at Kucherov, you look at all those McKinnon, all those guys who are, who are just almost a hundred point guarantee every year now. And it's like, those guys aren't making what, what Tavares is making. And that's becoming a bit of a problem in terms of just expectation. And I feel like it's unfair. I feel like if you look at his career stats and the year he's having this year, like this is, this is who he is. Like, yeah, he was touted to be one of the greatest number one overall picks of all time. But it's hasn't been a secret that his foot speed has been his biggest downfall in his, in his career. And I feel like maybe instead of me getting frustrated about his play in a certain game, game to game, maybe we got to step back and realize that this is just the hockey player that he is. He's never going to impress you with one of those McDavid deke through three people. He's never going to be the fastest guy on the ice. He's going to be a guy who grinds, who wins face-offs, who's not going to dominate possession, but find the right place to be on the ice to score a goal could be on your, like, you know, like I feel like sometimes us as fans expect too much out of a guy. Like there's always so much he can do, but it's annoying because like I said earlier, you, you look at the guys who are leading the league in points and, and Tavares is eating up way more of the cap than they are, other than and McDavid. It's the economics of the league, too. Like, I, it's just the way the NHL works. Like, guys 29 years old, and which is like you're approaching senior citizen territory in the NHL, and he's making $11 million for the next five seasons. I know. So, it's, it's a lot, dude. And it, yeah, it's, and it's a lot. And, and so... He listen, John is so talented, and I have no doubt in my mind that he's gonna find ways to tailor his game so he can still produce, maybe not at a um forty seven goal rate, but he'll still find ways to produce and get his cookies. But it's just it's just the way the league works. Like ask ask Canadians fans how they're feeling about that carry price contract right now. And I know that's that's not the same as the Tavares contract, but it's no, like hundred percent. Yeah, you're right. It's, I know exactly what you mean. You're looking at your carry price is widely considered one of the greatest goaltenders of all time in the national hockey league. And I bet you most Habs fans now look at that contract and are like, God, I wish we never signed that because the salary cap ramifications that it has for a guy that age and eat. And there's just, it's not realistic to expect him to produce at the rate of a Matthews, of a Marner, of a Dreisaitl, of a McKinnon at when he's 30, 31, 32, 33. No, he's not. Right? He's not that type of player. And No, and but but he's getting paid $11 million. So this is where it gets challenging. And then, like, 
you look, I, I don't, I, I'm the one contract that really makes me angry. Like when I really sit down and think about it, the one contract that Kyle Dubas has signed that really pisses me off is the Mitch Marner contract because I just, that to me is just bending over and giving him, giving way too much to Mitch Marner and his dad. People get upset about the Matthews contract in the five year tenure. Listen, Austin Matthews is an elite player yeah, he's, in this he's league. He's a star in the league. He's an elite man. player of this league. And he's, he's come in with like a new school, like NBA mentality where he's like, no, 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 I control this. You don't control this. He is league wide a star. He's in yes. the top five highest drawing guys in the league right now. And Mitch like, Marner like is it or not, not. Like, and that's I know what he over is. the last, last few years like people change opinions on this myself included and like because sometimes one player is playing better than the other but if you really sit down and you really look at this rationally and you really just like take all the emotion out of it Mitch Marner is not in the same conversation as Austin Matthews like sorry he's just not but he has a 10 million dollar contract and so you look at the impact that that's had on the Leafs salary cap. And so at least with Marner, you look and you say, okay, well, Marner's still young and has all these years left on his deal, whereas John is like 29. And so you're like, do we really need to be paying a 29-year-old $11 million? And it's a complete 180 from how everyone felt when he was signed. But this is what a salary cap does to you, man. It messes with your head and it totally makes changes the way that you feel about players. Yeah, and it's it's just like it's getting worse every year and it's like Kyle's just headed this new way of just making sure you protect all your best guys by paying them way too much money. And you look at like I know what you were saying with Mitch. It's like last year we were like Mitch is better than Austin because Austin was hurt last year and frankly was kind of a non-factor in the regular season, which it seemed like that. The guy sold 30 goals, but but you look at John like too like what you said about Marner, like Tavares wouldn't have had that year last year without Mitch. Yeah, John's never had a guy to play like 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 Mitch. Mitch set him up like crazy. Mitch had a ton of points last year, so Mitch was able to go to the bargaining table and be like, "Well, I was your best guy last year. I got you to the playoffs. I I I made Tavares a a, a king. I, he has forty seven goals. Yeah, and and it's just like all these guys are just like, I don't want to." be angry at Tavares anymore it's like I don't want to watch him and be like oh he's not he's not skating he's not dominant he's not deking through guys he's not scoring those beauty goals we should just accept the type of player that he is but it's again the 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 thing that just leads us back and no matter what we're talking about it all goes back to the salary cap no matter what thing we do or what we talk about with this team it's just it all just gravitates it pulls it right back into the salary cap conversation and it's annoying i'm tired of it i'm tired but of it's it not too, going away no no it's, <laughs> it's this not is just going the way away the league is man it's just the way the league is like you watch you watch some of these like rewind games they've been playing on sportsnet from the early 2000s where there was no cap and the leafs just were like all right we'll give this guy this and this guy yeah. like the one year they have like brian leach and brian Joe leach Dyke, and alex Dyke. mcgillney gary yeah. roberts darcy tucker shane corson like what? T- Matt's is captaining this whole thing. Thomas Caberlet, Brian McCabe, like Cujo. Yeah, and they 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 could go out inside. But the funny part about that is that leads into my history of the Leafs conversation. All those guys they went and signed like that those years to help them out. All those guys' greatest years of their career was not in a Maple Leaf uniform, yep. and they almost were just a shell of their former selves playing for this team. Yep. But it's you're right though. Like they could go out and do anything they want. It almost pisses me off how they weren't so good because of that. Like that pisses me off. It's like well, why if, weren't if, they good? Like and why? It's like, you look at Major League Baseball and how the Yankees and the Red Sox are just allowed to do whatever they want, and it's like, man, that would be that would be the Leafs. Yeah. Now I now I feel like it would, but yeah. I don't get how like a team like they weren't like. Like, yeah, they might be at the peak of their their money-making right now because you can't get in a building without spending a billion dollars. But, like, how in the early 2000s could they not go out and just flex their muscles and just do... Ah, it pisses me off. Yeah, I think I think the mentality... Because the salary cap changes the way everyone thinks, right? And that I think sucks. the mentality... It's the worst thing in sports. It's yeah, dumb. It is. it is, it is. But it just... It adds a whole... But... Uh, 
on the flip side, Ryan, it adds a whole other level of discussion and interest around pro sports. It's not just about the on ice product. It's how you allocate your your dollars off the ice to build your team. But I feel like this that's a problem with this league right now. It's like all we're going to talk about off the ice is money. And we're never going to talk about the guys who are, I mean, I guess it's the same thing in the NBA. Like we all, but like, I never once heard like how much is LeBron going to get paid? You know, no, it's about LeBron going out there and blocking a guy and, and dunking on a guy and hitting a big three. Like it's not about the the NBA. The NBA has, has, um, just a whole other level of star power. Like not to get too far off the Tavares topic, but like we're talking earlier about how if the NHL does like a, a play in with all the teams, it's like if the NBA did that, like how, how are your ratings in the, in the U S Oh, just not even in the U S every single guy I know, like by far the most popular sport with guys, my age and guys I know is basketball by a mile. Yeah. Like you got to grasp, like there's some football guys, like you can grasp out the football guys, but like when it comes to just interest with guys, my age, Oh boy, it's the NBA. Yeah. I, um, I see that a lot too. NBA has great crossover appeal too. Like hockey doesn't have that much crossover appeal. You ever notice that? Like tons of people love like the blue Jays and the Raptors and the NBA and major league baseball. And like the NHL is like, it, it, it has crossover, but I don't know, at least in my eyes, not as much. No, not even close. No. <laughs> and we're getting off the rails because we're talking about financials of other leagues. And it's just the reason why we get into that is just what Tavares represents. Like, it's just, yeah, it's, it just, sucks that we have to be angry at him for like not having a hundred points. Not yeah. every, he's a damn good hockey player. Literally the the negative argument towards John Tavares is purely about financials. Yeah. Like purely. Like you look at his numbers this year and while it's not a, last year, it's also not a bad season, but you still look at them and you're like, well, yeah, he's making he 11 60 million points in 63 yeah. games. That's, yeah. that's a hell of a season. Yeah. And you're still looking at him and you're like, well, well, and we think he's playing like off. We think he's yes. like not playing well. And the guy's yeah. still like just inching up on a point per game, which if you look at his career totals through 814 games in his career, that's the hockey player that he is. Yep. So it's just like maybe all this time we've had to reflect as soon as they can get back to playing Maple Leaf hockey, I can just think about this conversation and be like, you know what, John? You don't have to do that because it's not your fault you signed an eleven million dollar deal. It sucks that our salary cap sucks, but maybe instead of being pissed at John for not providing enough, like, like yeah, you want a little bit more. But like, if you look, that guy's having a hell of a year. Like, if he was having a dog year, it'd be different. But like, this is an off year and he's still doing well. So maybe we gotta just be like, no, it was. It's not his fault. Kyle did it. He didn't do it. So, to wrap all this up. If you were to get in your time machine and go back to July 1st, you're Kyle Dubas, and you walk in and you say, well, you know, John, well, you know, Mike, well, you know, Brendan, would you still have signed this contract? Is this like hindsight being 2020? Hindsight being 2020, would you still have signed this contract? Man. Oh. A I'll hard answer. Question, I'll man. answer. I'll answer. Yeah. Yes. I think you've got an opportunity to sign an elite player in the league. That's something that does not come along very often. You take it every time and you worry about how you're going to fix it down the road if it doesn't work out. That, like, imagine if he didn't sign him. Imagine if it, oh, it, it was sucked. leaked to the media. Oh, my God, right. He gets skewered. Him and Shanny would get raked over the coals. You're right. Damn right. You, had a chance. you are so right. You had a chance to sign John Tavares and you didn't take it. You're right. They would yeah. get destroyed. Yeah, they would get not even think of that. Yeah, they would get annihilated. And I think if you if you and I were in that seat and you've got a chance to sign literally one of the best players in the league who is willing to take less money than what other teams are offering him to come and play on your team, you make that deal. 100%. I, I I would sign him again for sure. 
Um, I, I don't think like early in the year, I, we, I said, no, I, I went, I went the other way, but thinking now I, I would sign him again because it's not, you're right. Like they had an opportunity to go get the best guy who's hit free agency in a long time and they did it. And you're right. They would have got absolutely roasted if they didn't. And that was like, Marner hadn't signed his contract then Nylander hadn't signed his contract then. It's beca- it started becoming a disaster when Kyle just decided to be one of the softest people on planet Earth while negotiating contracts and just deal with it horribly. And now, all the there's an interesting and- way to spin this, Ryan. Like, instead of looking at the Tavares deal and going, well, he's an old, he was an older player and you assigned him to $11 million and blah, blah, blah. Maybe if you were a little more hard-nosed at the negotiating table with Mitch Marner, we wouldn't be in this situation. Yeah, I don't think that's John's fault. I think yeah. I think the way you just described why you would do it again is the absolute like best point you could make for this. Is they would have got killed if they didn't do it, and all of including me. I would have been pissed if I knew John Tavares wanted to be a Maple Leaf and they couldn't get it done because it was too much money. We would have lost our minds. And and it that was before all the other negotiations. And and then after that it became we can and we will. And he had and he 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 was he was a little soft when it came to, to keeping that promise. So in closing on this, we both would sign John Tavares again, and we love having him here, and we love that he's the captain of the Maple Leafs. Yes. Would I, would I like for him to be an absolute superstar and lead the league in points every year? Yes. I would love for him to be magically faster. Yes. I would love for him to, to dominate games more, but that is just not the player he is, and it's not his fault that he signed that contract. That's a damn good contract, life-changing contract. You get to play at home. Man, I would sign that thing in a heartbeat if I knew I couldn't live up to it. Who cares? And and I know he knows he can live up to it, but I'm just saying, like, you, you, you got to sign that contract. So maybe all of us just need to accept the type of player that he is and just, and just ride it out. Before we uh, call it quits on this week's episode, Rye, I want to hit you with a little hot take of mine. All right, and I want to get your thoughts on it. So, potential 31 team plan. All the teams haven't been on the ice in a while, okay? I think that this favors the Maple Leafs. Because... All the talk about the Maple Leafs is that playoff intensity, do they have what it takes? Do they have what it takes? Everyone will be kind of ramping it back up when they come back, right? Which means, theoretically, the style of play won't be as like hard-nosed and in-your-face and rough, quote-unquote, playoff hockey. It'll be run-and-gun. Yeah, it'll be panic mode. And, and I think that it, that scenario really favors this Toronto Maple Leaf team. I think I really like the Leafs' chances to beat anyone in that style of game and this style of playoff. Your thoughts? You might be right. You You bring up a good point, but there is one thing that this group of players have shown me for a couple of years now. They will find a way to blow it. <laughs> I can promise you that right now. And I think the way you describe the Leaves having a good chance, man, just think about a team that's like, think about like the Sens or something. If they oh, yeah. just dude, like, I, dude, I'm looking at all of a I'm sudden at they the catch s- a heater and it's like oh, yeah. one of the worst teams in the league when the, like anything goes, man. That's dude, why I'm March looking at, Madness. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the, uh, like the league standings right now. So so from like 1 to 31. If you're like the Vancouver Canucks, okay? You're 20th. You're out of the playoffs. And you catch a heater. You could, you could go on a real run. Canucks are a good young team. 
Yeah, Canucks are a damn good team. Good yeah, coach. Like, yeah, like why can't they why can't they put a couple wins together? Hundred percent. That's why that's why when you say like the March Madness format and why people love that tournament so much is because of that. Yep. It's you can have a, a team of obscurity that doesn't have the Zions or or the RJ Barrett's or the Anthony Davis and they can go on a run. That's that's what this makes us to Rob, this would be the greatest thing this league has ever had ever period not even close like well, this would you be wanna, the you, greatest thing that ever happened to pro hockey you want to know another thing about doing a, a play in like this like another good thing about it 31 team draft lottery Oh boy, I'd be pretty pissed. If I, I'm not gonna lie, I'd be pretty pissed if I'm the Wings. <laughs> yeah, right. If I'm the, because they're they're by far the tankers. So yeah. it's like I'd be a little rattled with that. But yeah, you're the Wings, and you end up getting like the 25th overall pick. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> that would suck, man. There's a lot yeah. to figure out. But but don't don't give me if someone wants to argue with me, give me the wham wham about how how teams worked harder than other teams. It's like shut up. This is for all for entertainment, man. Like yeah. let, let's just chill on the traditional things about sports which is why baseball drives me nuts well but, well ryan ryan we live in a society where it's just a bunch of whiners and they're gonna find something to whine oh, about yeah. so yeah just so there's gonna that, be just something a to hop on twitter and cry about yeah there's gonna be a huge which section is, of people that which, don't think it's fair yeah. but it's like man who cares if you're if you're the red wings you get to play an, an extra playoff game why not it's awesome yeah who care i would take like, that every day of the week i the it would senators suck the, the yeah. devils the sabers like why not, man? Damn right. Like, why not? So let's 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 all hope that that's actually something that becomes reality. Because I think that would be awesome. And I think I think the NBA and the NHL should come together. This is what I honestly think. Adam Silver and Gary Bettman need to get in a room. They need to come up with the same sort of way they're going to go about this, and then work the scheduling so they're not going up against each other. And when everyone's quarantined in their homes, one day you've got a slate of NHL play-in games and you got a slate of NBA play-in games. Off you go. Yeah. Yeah. Or or you, you, you want to make some dough off yeah. TV advertising? Yeah, you can you can run into each other maybe in the early rounds because you'll probably have games every day. But when it comes to kind of dwindling it out a little bit, then then you for sure spread it out. Yeah. Imagine just sitting back at a whole day of NBA. NHL play it's like oh how's, my god man how's Ryan how's the oh, gambling on that what yeah. like get me 48 beers now like <laughs> yeah, yeah. let's go yeah, like oh my god I know how's, I can't describe to you how happy you I would 48 be 48 beers and and some some Ooh. money line oh you're oh ready my to go. goodness it would be yeah my bank account might suck after but it'd be a lot of fun yeah. Yeah, yeah. So let's hope that something like that happens. I, you know what? Sitting here talking to you about it, I'm, I'm really fired up about that now. Oh I think that would God. be epic. Like, It'd make it all worth it. I agree. Like, if you got, if if you gotta like shorten next season in order to make this happen, you do gotta it. do it, man. I don't yeah. want to watch game one. I don't yeah. care. I don't want to yeah. do this again. Yeah. yeah. Let's go to the big stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. That's why you get through the regular season. Yes. Yes. Hundred percent. All right, on that note, we're ending on a high here. Thanks, everyone, for downloading this week. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, follow us on Instagram, at Talking Buds Podcast. We're also on iTunes and Spotify. Hit that follow or subscribe button. Thanks again, guys.